Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. You're watching PNT. I'm your host, wondering why the hell I decided to grow a beard in the first place. Up front this week, according to an article by the Huffington Post and numerous online sources, one Iowa resident is facing a situation that seems straight out of The Shining. Bagley resident Nick Lestina was recently shocked and dismayed to discover his basement had inexplicably filled with over five inches of blood. Noticing a terrible smell coming from downstairs, Lestina had followed his nose to the grisly scene, finding that instead of freshly folded laundry, the entire area was awash with blood, fat, and animal tissues that had apparently seeped in from the nearby Dolls Meat Locker Company. The rotting remains had apparently been disposed of down a drain that unfortunately connected with Lestina's plumbing, eventually backflowing into the homeowner's basement. Lestina and his family have lived next to the meatpacking company without incident for over a decade, but admit that the Crimson Cascade could not have come at a worse time, as the family has been preparing to put the home on the market. As though to add insult to injury, the disgusting deluge destroyed many of the family's belongings that had been stored downstairs. The owners of dolls have offered to pay for the cleanup costs and removal of the waste, hoping that a settlement can be arranged without the need for court proceedings. For PNT's part, while we certainly sympathize with the Listina's putrid plight, we have to point out that there may yet be a silver lining to the situation. For while the macabre mishap might prove a non-starter for most would-be homebuyers, it would certainly appeal to any vampires looking for a nice place to relax, have a swim, and take in a good meal. From bloody basements to cut up cows, the next story in our weekly roundup of the weird takes us to Oregon, where a rash of mysterious mutilations are frustrating officials. Ranchers in Harney County have recently been discovering multiple dead cattle that have been found with the classic signs of animal mutilation. With the gory effects, including removal of the tongue, eyes, and reproductive organs in what appears to be a surgical manner. In a further chilling touch, the unfortunate animals are found completely drained of blood, but with absolutely no evidence of stains or tracks in the area surrounding the corpses. The hacked-up heifers are the most recent of a long line of similar incidents that date back to 1967 when a thoroughbred mare named Lady was discovered in the San Luis Valley area of Colorado with the flesh around her skull completely removed and the edges of the cuts far too sharp and precise to be caused by the actions of scavengers. The rancher finding the horse that later became famous as Snippy due to the gruesome nature of the mutilations also was said to have reported a strong smell similar to nail polish remover lingering in the air around the corpse. Scavengers were seen to avoid the corpse of the horse, which was found in the middle of an area 100 feet in diameter that was clear of any tracks or footprints, including that of the horse. Examining the carcass, experts found that many of the mare's internal organs had been removed, including the lungs, heart, brain, and reproductive organs. The pathologist examining the body noted a complete lack of blood, either in the corpse or on the surrounding area. The phenomena of animal mutilations has not been contained in the 1960s, however, with thousands of reports from frustrated ranchers pouring in from across the United States, with the Oregon reports only the most recent examples. With cattle often selling for more than $6,000 apiece, the inexplicable deaths are a continuing hardship for the ranchers depending upon the herds to pay their bills. Authorities have been unable to explain the deaths, despite Harney County Sheriff's Deputy Dan Jenkins tracking the sudden increase in cases. With few leads and little to no evidence other than the drained and desiccated corpses to go on, Jenkins expressed frustration with the investigation, fielding calls from local residents with explanations ranging from military operations, aliens, and private bioengineering firms seeking to create a universal blood plasma. Nearby Silva's Valley Ranch has been hardest hit by the mysterious mutilations, with the ranchers offering a $25,000 reward to anyone who can provide information that solves the case. For PNT's part, while we have always found this particular corner of the paranormal to be extremely dark and unsettling, 
we cannot help but wonder if the mystery might be easily solved simply by looking for local shortages of steak sauce. We'll be back in just a few moments with the final part of our program, but first, a word from our sponsor. It's spring practice, and these youngsters are burning energy fast, energy they also need for proper growth. But what about him? Is your child like this? If your child isn't keeping up with the gang, if he's run down, underweight, he may not be getting enough iron and vitamins from his food for rich red blood, for weight and growth. If so, it's time to call for Juvenal. Juvenal Vitamin Iron Tonic, the red blood builder with vitamin B12, can prove amazingly effective for such children. Improving appetite, helping them gain weight and grow, and Juvenal tastes like lollipops. Your child must start to gain weight, solid extra pounds in just seven days, or your money back. All children need Juvenal's vital elements for firm, strong bodies. This giant 12-ounce bottle of Juvenal is only $1.98 at all drugstores. Welcome back. And remember, if your child seems to be underweight, it's time to call for Juvenal. Why, in no time at all, little Jimmy's muscles will be bursting like the Hulks through one of our stylish shirts now available from our Teespring store. You can sit back and relax, knowing that once he drains a logoed mug full of Juvenal, your little man will soon be ripping through the soft cotton fabric like James T. Kirk sighting an alien female. Be a responsible parent, and get yours today. For the final part of our weekly Roundup of the Weird, PNT is pleased to present an unusual UFO sighting recently filmed in the Ukraine. The footage, taken last September 11th, appears to show a large number of strange amber objects hovering in the skies over Odessa. Let's have a look at the footage.
So what were these strange objects filmed hovering over Odessa, Ukraine last September? Let's run down the possibilities. First, PNT has to make note that this footage is inordinately shaking and was extremely difficult to stabilize and motion track the object due to the sudden and rapid movements of the witness's hands. We did our best, utilizing our time-consuming manual tracking as well as computer stabilization, in the hopes of pulling a clear image or perhaps a segment of video from the tape. This footage is a prime example of why, when filming any object and you're not using a tripod, you should brace your arms against any nearby surface, including your body. This will lessen the extreme motions that lead to the light trails you see here. These motions are also a good example of why you should not zoom in when recording a UFO. Doing so only magnifies any camera motions and makes eventual analysis of the footage more difficult. So with that caveat, let's eliminate the obvious. The objects here are obviously not birds, clouds, stars, or astronomical phenomena such as meteors. Drones and balloons could both be a possibility, but would have to be inordinately large and well lit in order to match the objects seen here. As mentioned in the witness statement, the objects appeared over the ocean which would make tethering balloons difficult and would also present a challenge for drones. Strong air currents over the surface of the waters would make it very difficult for either to hold steady position. Not that you could tell from the camera movements. That would lead us to our next likely culprit, flares. Flares could certainly account for the intense luminosity of the objects in the video, as well as their brilliant amber hue. As is our standard procedure, PNT searched for both civilian airports and military installations in the area of the sighting, and, as usual, found no lack of either. Which definitely opens the possibility that these objects could have been flares dropped as part of a military maneuver. And we found similar footage to prove it. Acting on a hunch, PNT searched for UFO videos from the same area, hoping to find additional footage and possibly more information as to what the objects might be. We were immediately struck by the similarities to this piece of footage, which was filmed over Odessa on October 3rd of 2017. This footage appears to confirm our hypothesis, for not only do the lights in this video bear strong resemblance to the original, but they also show clear plumes of smoke rising from the lights, a firm sign of flares often used by military forces worldwide. Despite being fairly convinced that we'd found the answer, PNT kept digging, and this is where things got interesting. Despite the clear similarities between the two sets of lights, the 2019 objects have marked differences in both size and the relative stability of the lights. The 2017 objects are far more staggered and of regular size, where the latter footage shows larger and smaller light sources with varying levels of illumination. The 2017 lights seem to sparkle brilliantly, being flares, while the current sighting shows much softer, duller spheres. Missing also is the clear drop or burnout of the flares as seen here. So if the objects in our tape are flares, then there should be some evidence of the smoke plumes reflecting the glare of the burning flare below. Clearly, this is not the case. Also worth noting is the exact positioning of the lights, almost resembling the light patterns of commercial aircraft. So, what about planes? Could it be possible that these objects are nothing more than an oncoming aircraft filmed from head-on, masking the motion of the plane and making it appear as though the lights were hovering in place? While this is certainly a possibility, there are two large holes in this theory. First is the size of the objects in relation to the foreground element seen at the bottom of the frame. While it is difficult to conclusively determine, the objects appear to be much larger than common aircraft lights. Second, we see no evidence at all of the blinking identification lights required on all commercial aircraft. Given this, and if these lights are not individuals, but rather part of a much larger craft, then it is a very large one indeed. That leads us to our inevitable friend, the military. 
Given the proximity of the bases to the area, the contested geopolitical nature of the country, and the accompanying presence of military personnel of multiple nations, it is not unreasonable to assume that this very well could be a military asset performing covert surveillance in the hopes of gaining an advantage over the others. Not unreasonable, but also not provable, at least at this time. Given the slow rate at which governments declassify and disseminate information, it will no doubt be a very long time indeed before this theory can be confirmed, if ever. So, with our leads running short and even our most likely explanations starting to dim, we can turn our attention to the boundless possibilities presented by the unknown. Is it possible that the lights shown in this incredibly shaky footage are exactly what they seem to be, unidentified craft from some place unknown to us? Where would such craft come from? What would the purpose of their visit be? Could they be observing what is admittedly a flash zone for international conflict, monitoring the military activities of forces from many disparate nations in order to learn more about our culture? As odd as this notion may seem to be, P&T can point to a pattern revealed by early UFO reports gathered by Project Sign, Grudge, and Blue Book. Numerous sightings ranging from the mid-1940s through the 1970s have included reports filed by military personnel stationed at sensitive facilities, especially nuclear missile sites. Throughout the Cold War, reports were suppressed on both sides that documented numerous instances of UFOs displaying a marked interest in our nuclear capabilities, and in some cases seeming to directly interfere with the onboard electronics of the missiles themselves. Were these unknown observers attempting to document or to influence world events, and to what end? Are they even now following with a keen eye the developments in the Ukraine, attempting to either subvert or to possibly encourage hostilities between the nations? Was it their interventions that prevented the human race from extinction during the hottest parts of the Cold War? Or a more chilling thought, that they might have in fact encouraged them? While this might seem a bit extreme for a supposedly advanced culture, one only needs look to our own relentless exploitation of the Earth's resources to see that it is not so far-fetched that an alien race, having similarly depleted their own world, would go in search of other planets to exploit. Given their advanced technology, less advanced species such as ours would be easy pickings for these intergalactic vultures. Are we the masters of our own destinies, or simply puppets, at the command of powers we cannot possibly comprehend. Unsettling thoughts that just might serve to bring the human race together against a collective foe. The question then becomes, what if we lose? And perhaps even more to the point, what if we win? Would we choose the moral high road and make peace with our unknown opponents, seeking to further our own understanding of the universe? Or would we soon find that we are in fact no better than they are, and that we are united not in the bonds of brotherhood, but in the pursuit of profit? Unsettling thoughts to ponder the next time you look up to the skies and see something strange. But whether or not the odd objects caught on tape last September hovering over Odessa, Ukraine, were a series of floating flares military maneuvers of an unknown nature, or something else entirely, we'll leave up to you to decide. Sound off in the comments section below with your thoughts. That's it for this time, faithful viewers. Be sure to click like, share, subscribe, and hit the bell icon to be notified when PNT presents your next portion of The Paranormal. I'm your host, reminding you to keep an open mind. Because a closed one shuts out the truth.